Hello and welcome to Video Podcast 9.3. In this podcast, I will overview passive and active continental margins. Before getting into detail about passive and active continental margins, I think it would be helpful to take a look at this concept map that I created. This map provides a good general overview of what this podcast is all about. So it would probably be a good idea to jot this down and keep this in mind as you watch this video. By definition, continental margins are the outer margins of continents, where continental crust transitions into oceanic crust. There are two types of continental margins, passive and active continental margins. Passive continental margins are geologically inactive, and what that means is they are generally not associated with earthquakes and volcanism. A great example of a place that you'd find passive continental margins is the east coast of the United States. As depicted on the screen, you find a passive continental margin that extends from Florida all the way up the New England coastline. Passive continental margins have three primary features, namely the continental shelf, the continental slope, and the continental rise, and I'll go into more detail on those three features later in this video. The second type of continental margin is an active continental margin. When we say active, we mean geologically active. Specifically, these continental margins are associated with convergent plate boundaries and subduction. In regions where you find active continental margins, you often find earthquakes and volcanic activity. And another telltale sign of active continental margins is the existence of oceanic trenches in these regions. Okay, now let's go ahead and get into the weeds regarding continental margins. The first type of continental margin that I will overview is the passive continental margin. Before I define passive continental margins, I'd like to draw your attention to the picture shown on the screen. If we hopped into a boat and voyaged from point A to point B, as shown in this picture, you can see that there'd be a lot of interesting features occurring on the ocean floor below you as you go on that trip. Now, your continental margins will be found very close to point A and point B, shown on this map. We'll talk more about the mid-ocean ridge and the deep ocean basin in our next vodcast, but for now let's talk about features 1, 2, 3, and 9, 10, and 11 shown in this image, because all six of those numbered features correspond to passive continental margins. Passive continental margins are found along most coastal areas that surround the Atlantic Ocean, and they exhibit very wide, extensive continental shelves. If you take a look at the continental shelf off the coast of the eastern United States, which is indicated here in light blue, you can see that it's pretty extensive in size. I'd like to stress once more that passive continental margins are not associated with plate boundaries. These continental margins experience little volcanism and few earthquakes. And that makes sense because when you think of volcanic activity and earthquakes, you typically don't think of the east coast of the United States. Now let's shift our attention to the three primary features associated with passive continental margins. The first feature that I'll overview is the continental shelf. And you can think of the continental shelf as being a flooded extension of the continent itself. Sea level has changed throughout time, and in the past when sea level was lower, some of this continental shelf area was probably exposed as land. So take a look at the picture shown on the screen and think of how cool Florida would have looked when our sea level was much lower in the past. Now, the continental shelf is gently sloping and it's relatively featureless. But despite it being kind of boring based on the aforementioned information, the continental shelf is of political and economic interest because it contains oil, natural gas, and other important mineral deposits. The second feature I'd like to overview is the continental slope, and it marks the seaward edge of the continental shelf. The most obvious feature of the continental slope is how steep it is. As shown in this picture, there is a rapid change in depth once you encounter the continental slope. It's also important to note that the continental slope marks the boundary between where we find continental crust and oceanic crust. As a refresher, oceanic crust is more dense than continental crust. This is because oceanic crust is composed of high density basalt, whereas continental crust is composed of less dense rocks like granite. The third and final feature of passive continental margins that I'd like to overview is the continental rise. This is where the continental slope will slowly merge into a more gradual incline. As shown in the picture, the continental rise has slope to it, but it's not nearly as steep as the continental slope. In this region, you'll find thick accumulations of sediment that have moved down the continental slope. If you take a look at the deep sea fan indicated in this picture, it may remind you of the alluvial fans that we learned about during our Desert Spodcast. 
Now let's shift our attention to active continental margins. Specifically, active continental margins occur where oceanic lithosphere is subducted beneath the leading edge of a continent. I'd like to call your attention to the image shown on the far right side of this slide. As shown in this picture, an active continental margin will be located along a convergent plate boundary where oceanic lithosphere is being subducted beneath the leading edge of a continent. Some of these subduction zones contain what's called an accretionary wedge, and an accretionary wedge can develop near subduction zones where sediment is beginning to pile up. It's important to note that not all subduction zones will have an accretionary wedge. Sometimes those sediments can get carried into the mantle by the subducting plate, and when that happens, a deep ocean trench can be formed. It's important to note that active continental margins are found primarily around the Pacific Ocean. We sometimes call the region with red triangles shown in this image the Ring of Fire, and this picture indicates all the places that we find active continental margins around the Pacific Ocean. So in summary, active continental margins are geologically active, and passive continental margins are geologically inactive. But regardless of what type of margin we're talking about, the continental margin is the outer margin of the continents, and it's the location where continental crust will transition to oceanic crust. Okay, that concludes this video podcast. In our next podcast, I will overview some of the prominent features of the ocean floor.